This is my automatic pop hole for the chicken house. It works on a light cell, a timer, or it's got a manual override switch, so I'll operate that now. The door itself is a very heavy piece of plywood which runs in these aluminium runners. It's quite a loose fit. The bottom edge tucks in behind the ramp so there's very little opportunity for any animal to prise it open. It's hauled up on this piece of thin but strong fishing line and the whole mechanism that operates it is contained in this waterproof box. That's what I really want to show you so I'll open that up now. This is the inside of the control box. Here we have the battery, the electronics, and here's the mechanism that holds the line. Powered by a small geared motor, which came out of an old printer, which turns a shaft, which has the line wound around it. There. The clever thing about this is the line always wraps on neatly and is always kept vertical directly above the hole in the box. Because instead of using ordinary bearings, I've used a nut and a piece of threaded rod so that the whole mechanism, including the motor, tracks from left to right as it winds. And up above here, I have a pair of limit switches. They detect when the door's fully open, fully closed. I'll set the camera up on a tripod and show you a video of it moving. It'll make a lot more sense. I'll close the door now. You'll see the motor turn. The cord will be kept under tension by the weight of the door. At the bottom the limit switch operates, which shuts off the motor. When it's closing, the motor doesn't have to work very hard at all, so its uh, current is limited by a resistor. I'll now open the door, you'll see the reverse. Notice the way the cord winds neatly onto the drum, and it's always kept vertical. This has operated reliably for over seven years now, but I think today it's due for a bit of a service, so I'm going to give it some oil. The centre of the electronics is this PIC chip, running a simple program. Power transistors, relay for switching the motor. Photo transistor here detects the light levels. And the shrouded LED indicates when the battery is being charged. Charge is supplied at a very low current, at about 20 volts, from a transformer in a nearby shed. Now that charge supply also acts as the signal for the timer. The charger in the shed is uh, plugged into a pinwheel timer and the pick can detect when the charge is being applied. So that feed from the shed serves two purposes, charging the battery and in timer mode it tells it when to open and when to close. This is the power supply and timer, and I have to say in the seven years since I made it, it's never been used. Obviously it operates just to charge the battery, but we've never operated the pop hole in timer mode. The light cell has always worked without fail. If I was making another one, I would just have it operate on a light cell. These are the controls. 
the LEDs indicate the mode and the mode selected with this little toggle switch that can be flicked up and down. Incidentally up at the top there is a small vent that's fitted because uh, in any sealed box where there's a rechargeable battery there's a chance it would produce hydrogen and it would only take one spark from the motor for disastrous consequences. So there it is, it's a very useful gadget, particularly good if you let other people look after your hens from time to time. They then don't have to worry about coming round early to let them out or staying up until dark. Come round to um, shut them in at night.